about three days a week. I spend my mornings helping teach basic motor skills to young kids with autism at 8.30 in the morning. And don't get me wrong, it's a blessing. Except for the fact that I'm trying to teach 18 autistic eight-year-olds to sing Itsy Bitsy Spider at the crack of 8.30 in the morning. But, but James, James makes my days better. He comes with a list of disorders longer than most felons' arrest records and a smile that would turn those same felons into puppy dogs. James can't even hit the notes. If he could, okay, he wouldn't be able to hold them very long, but if he could, he would belt them. You'd be able to hear Kurt Cobain's pain and Mahalia Jackson's praise in an eight-year-old, the way he jerks his head and shoulders just to get deeper inside the notes that he can't hit. And while I'm begging Terrence and Thomas to at least try and hum, Mary had a little lamb, James is by my side, bellowing God's gospel from lungs so small I could hold them in my hands and when it comes time to play. He drags me out into the hallway and he tells me we should sing Amazing Grace together. So we do. Over and over, until it sounds just like he wants a note held a little longer here, a little higher there. I call him my sultan of soul, and even though he has no idea what I'm talking about, he's still proud of it. Walks into the back room one day where he knows he shouldn't be, sees a look on my face as CNN tells the tale of another school shooting, and he asks me if the people on TV are in trouble, and then without waiting for a response, he says, don't worry, Jesus is there. And I want to tell him I stopped believing in Jesus when I couldn't understand why Jesus would stunt the kind of humanity I see in him. I want to tell him I think God screwed you. I want to tell him I don't understand why God spent so much time giving you flaws that he didn't give to me instead. But I don't do that, y'all. How could I? Look at him. He's innocent and sweet and, and quirky. He scratches the left side of his face with his right hand. He is as sweet as Christmas morning. He is as graceful as dishes breaking. And I still watch him like I watch Snowfall. In silence. A couple of months ago, he, he became sick. I would visit him when I could. I walked into his room one day as he asked me if I remembered to brush my teeth. I said, yes. And then he asked me if I remembered to comb my hair, and I said, of course. And then he asked me if I believed in Jesus, and I stood there shocked. And I realized that God is going to find me whether I want God to or not, calling me from the only face left on this planet that I can't seem to deny. So for the first time in a long time, I just said, yeah. Y'all, God uses James like he's an instrument. And even though his notes may be bent, they are still beautiful like they came from a scale God tailored himself, tuned to the key of conviction. And I have prayed to God a whole lot in the last couple weeks. Mostly because now James is with him, probably standing by his side, singing Amazing Grace in all those wrong notes just like we practiced. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound Saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, and now I see. Carlos Robinson.